I went to actually uh, prepare a different message. And I just uh, got into my office and I just sat down and I just started to write. And, uh, and, I, and as I started to write these things, I thought, oh, that's good. <laughs> and I believe that it's significant for the day that we're living in. And uh, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And I believe that, uh, that God really does want us to do some stuff. We live in a time when things seem to be out of control. Can I hear an amen though? Amen. There, are we living in a time when, when stupid has become stupider? And I didn't know how stupid stupid could really get. That educated idiots can be so stupid. I don't, I don't really understand it. I really do not understand it. We're, we're living in a time when it's, it's not stay, safe to walk alone at night anymore. Our homes have become like fortresses. i got a triple lock security, can't kick it in front door. But the back door, you can get in easy from the back door. <laughs> <laughs> but man, those front doors, they're good. But most burglars don't come in through the front door. <laughs> You know, as Christians, we can have our front doors pretty secure, but there's a back door there too that we've got to keep watching. Amen? Triple lock security doors and windows. We've got poverty, new strains of diseases, superbugs. We've got this insane man in North Korea who seems to be hell-bent on blowing up the world. We've got ISIS. All these things have created an atmosphere of fear and uncertainty in our space where we live, where we're at. I believe they've got uh, stuff there that, uh, that now can reach Darwin. I don't know whether he's got anything in it. He might put a penny bunger in it. I don't know if he's got the, the, the any, anything there that can really work. But anyhow, it, it, it's got the ability to do that. A lot of people from Darwin are going to come to live on the Sunshine Coast. <laughs> the good news really is, is that God can do it again. God can make a way where there is no way. Where God can deliver us out of and bring us into something so dynamic and so powerful. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against it. We do have a choice, though, whether we're going to uh, be in that place where when the wind of God does blow, that we will be ignited with the fire that God wants to ignite the church with. And we can be running around doing a lot of silly things, but I believe that God has a place for us. I believe that if we're going to really break through, there's a couple of things that we need to do. They're very, very simple things. But number one is keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Your emotions will let you down. If there's one area that the enemy is really having a field day, it's with our emotions. If you let Satan, Satan will have a field day with your emotions and your walk with Jesus will be like playing snakes and ladders. Anybody ever played that game? It's a terrible game. Because, man, getting up that ladder can be so hard and then you, it's not hard to slide back. <laughs> Anybody notice that? You're gone. One slip and you're gone. But that's what our, our lives will be like. And, and I've seen a lot of mature people who really know the Word of God that have, that have slipped away and, and just fallen away right from, from, from almost to a total backslidden space. Takes you back to where you started. I've seen many, many of full-on Christians fall away. Amen? That's a sad thing, isn't it? Anybody here know of anybody like that? Come on, put up your hand. Give us a big wave. Because why don't we just pray for those people right now? Come on, keep your hand up. Father, there are so many people that have got onto that slippery slope, onto that, that thing there where, where the enemies just got around them and got into them. And Lord, they're ones that wear this on their heart right now. And we're lifting them to you, Father. We're praying that by your Spirit, by your Spirit, you'd bring them back. By your Spirit, Satan, we're commanding you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to get your filthy hands off them now and loose them. God said, set my people free and let them go. 
You've got to let them go, devil, in Jesus' name. And Father will give you all the praise and all the glory. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Don't, uh, don't let the enemy get you on that slippery thing that you just slip, slip away. I believe, number two, you've got to know what God says about your circumstance and hold on. Don't listen to the enemy's lies. Today, there are so many opinions and we can get confused. If there's one thing that I've noticed in, the, in the God's people today, there's a lot of confusion. People like today... And I know that in a lot of churches, Chris, what you preached this morning, you'd get kicked out. Because there's so much confusion and, and there's arguments and people will say, well, that's Old Testament. And people would say this. And I know that you, can, you could trump that with a, with a hundred other verses, you know what I mean? But somewhere along the line, somebody has got this little thing and it's got on the inside of them and that's how they believe. And, 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 it, and it robs them and it destroys them. And I do honestly believe and I... I believe that with every fiber of my being, where we've robbed God, we've robbed God from blessing us. We have robbed God from blessing us because if you see, He said, prove me now and see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out this blessing that I want to be yours. But because of that, man thinks he's doing good by, by tightening up his wallet and holding on to it and sitting there, man, at offering time, they hold on to their dollar or their five dollars, whatever it might be, so tight that even the queen gets a tear in her eye. <laughs> I can remember when I first, you know, started to give, I, I watched my twenty dollars, I think it was twenty quid at that time. That was a lot of money. I watched it. Man, I watched it. <laughs> went up and down the aisles. I went up I, I, because it was one of those open trays. I could see it sitting there in all its glory. And I'm watching this thing, but then it went out through the back door. I thought, that's it. It's gone. <laughs> Somehow or other, I thought, while I could still see it, I could, might have been able to get hold of it again. <laughs> I offered to count the offering, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> oh, man. The book of Acts started with a blaze of power. I believe that what I want you to in, in your indelibly print into your mind, God can do it again. God can do it again, amen. God can do it again. He's not asleep. He's not slumbering. He's awake. He's alive. He's, he's waiting. He's, there's, a, there's a, something on the inside of him, I believe, that's even exciting God at this moment as, we, as the church is getting ready, as he, as he sees a bunch of people starting to, to stir and as he sees a bunch of people starting to get so hungry for God. Amen. The book of Acts started with a blaze of power. It was like uh, one day here are all the disciples, they're uh, emotionally empty, they're hopeless, uh, they, they're, they're, they're crippled in, inside themselves, they're, their hearts are, are just broken, fearing for their own lives. But then the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2, it says, but then the day of Pentecost had fully come. Something happened that day that I believe God can do again and again and again and again. I really want us to catch this. I want you to catch this. Something happened that day that can never, ever be reversed. A lot of people today, because of their opinions, they say that God, the outpouring of the Spirit, died with the disciples. When they died, that was the end of it. That is not true. But I believe that what God started that day will never, ever be reversed. It can never be stopped. God poured out of His Spirit upon mankind and the church was birthed. It was birthed with power from above. Amen. Friend, if you want to win anything in this life, if you want to overcome, if you want to triumph, don't look to man for your situation or circumstance or situation. Somebody might be able to give you a word, but I want to tell you, whatever's going to overcome this world has got to come from above. Amen. It's got to come from God above. It will come by His Spirit. The Bible speaks about a rushing mighty wind. The whole place was filled with tongues of fire. They were empowered with the mighty power of God. Talk about an encounter with God. Talk about a touch from God. These men, they were, I, I try to imagine what it would have been like. 
just a few hours before as they were emotionally wrecked, as they were emotionally there going through it, and they're in an upper room, but then this mighty rushing wind, and the whole place was filled, and there were tongues of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they began to speak with other tongues. They, they had an amazing encounter. I want to say that that day when they just started to demonstrate and see the power of God, the things of this world, the things that were worrying them, the things that were concerning them, uh, would have grown strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Amen. In the light of His power. Perhaps it was the same fire in the burning bush, a fire that did not consume, that caught Moses' attention. Now there is a fire on each one of them that did not consume them. Fear of man is gone. Things there that, that, you know, Peter not very long before denied Jesus. But now the fear of man is gone. Peter stands up uh, and starts to declare, these men are not drunk as you suppose. Uh, As a result of that, he said that this is but the third hour, but this is what was spoken by the prophet of of God, by by Joel himself. He said, in the last days, God is going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And let me remind you again and again, God can do it again and again. And what God started that day can never, ever be stopped and will never, ever be reversed. I thank God today that that river is still flowing right now. Amen. I thank God that the river of God, the outpouring of the Spirit of God is still happening today. And it doesn't matter. You can be an an Aborigine sitting under a tree. You can be somebody in Africa there with just a little loincloth on and sitting under some sort of a tree there as well and just lifting up your hands to a living God and the Holy Spirit will come down. That same power, that same anointing that flowed on the day of... Pentecost will flow into a human's life as they're hungry, as they're thirsting, as they're reaching out to God. Friend, I want to tell you what's happened is the church has stopped reaching out to God. We've been lulled to sleep in Delilah's lap and we're in lullaby land. Well, I want to tell you the Bible says in many places, awake, arise, shine, stand to your feet, lift up those hands that hang down, put a bit of oil on your face, hallelujah, put a smile on your dial, amen. If only one side of your face is working, can well do two on the other side. Because that same mighty Holy Ghost power is flowing. Amen. And I picture that in my mind. I picture a bunch of people there under a tree somewhere and they're crying out to their God and the mighty power of God just fills them with the Spirit of God. The anointing, the anointing. That same Holy Ghost fire is the same power that will touch your life. The same anointing, the same power, the same victory can flow into your life as well. Amen. Fear is gone and he starts to cry out these words. 3,000 people baptized that day. They surrendered their lives to Christ. Peter and John go up, uh, up to a place there now to pray. And as they go up there and they, they see this man that's crippled and says, Silver I do, and gold I do not have, but such as I have give I thee. Whoa, what an amazing demonstration of God's healing power as this crippled man began walking and leaping and praising God. I was thinking this morning as we were worshipping, I was thinking there, man, how, what would it be like as, this, as, as, as Peter and John now take this guy who, who's just been healed and walk him into church and he doesn't walk in like well he couldn't walk in anyhow he wasn't perhaps going in like other people were going in it looked like they're going to the dentist and on the way out looking like they've been to the dentist amen but instead of that, they were all coming in. Here, this guy's walking and leaping and praising God. I want to tell you, I long for the day when we're coming to church and, and we're just walking and leaping and praising God. That people come in with a shout. They're not coming in for to get a massage. They're not coming in to get a little dabble, do you? Something to get you by for the week. A little touching from the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you know how bad it's been. You know how tough it's been out there. I've been getting attacked. I've been getting this. And I just need a little touch. I just need a little bit of sympathy. No, I want to tell you that we come in with the fire of God burning in our bellies. Hallelujah. We've used the church too much as a hospital. How would it be? Walking and leaping and praising God. Glory to God. If I wasn't reminded of my age, I was going to jump on the chair. 
Amazing demonstration of God's healing power. He's walking and leaping and, and, there, and, and it says there that 5,000 gave their lives to Jesus. Oh, what a glorious day. Man, it would have been just amazing. Oh, they would have been so happy. It's a day we all long for. The day we all long for. I want to just read something to you in Exodus. Exodus uh, 34 verse 12. Another thing you've got to be careful of. It says this. It says, take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, the world, the world system, the flesh. Don't serve their gods, their mammon, pride, selfish ambition, lust of the flesh. When God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, He wanted to bless them. He wanted to pour out His blessing upon them. He warned them if they wanted to stay in the blessing, don't make a covenant with the world and don't serve their gods. Friend, today I believe that the, we, we allow the enemy to get in. Yeah, the enemy just to, to rob from us and we become like the world. We've got to change some things, I believe. When God delivered you out of. See, God didn't leave you in it. God delivered you out of the kingdom of darkness. He, he delivered us out. His desire was to bless you, to be your dad, to be your provider, to be your healer, to be your protector. But he warns us, if you want to stay under the spout where the glory comes out, don't make a covenant with the world or serve as God's. But today you, you can't really tell the difference much between church and the world. I believe that our salvation is fulfilled. It's paid for. It's complete. Do you believe that? Mixture is a curse. Don't fall into Satan's trap. His lies will destroy any child of God. Don't fall into his trap. Here are these disciples. Let's go back to the book of Acts. Here are these disciples there walking and leaping and praising God and there's amazing things happening. Oh, all things are, are mar marvelous. One minute they're rejoicing about the great miracle and now they're in jail. <laughs> See, we, we've got to get rid of some stuff. We think that being a Christian is tiptoeing through the tulips with Tiny Tim. That she's going to be right, mate. I'm a child of God now. I put on the armor this morning. <laughs> now, I believe in all this stuff, amen? But there's an enemy out there. And I don't know much about armor, but there's not too much at the back. <laughs> is that correct? Haven't put any on lately, but... You can have a triple lock door on the front, but what about the back door? What about when a little bit of persecution comes? What about when a little bit of trial comes? What about when a little bit of tribulation comes? What about, well, oh, I don't believe in that. I don't. <laughs> Friend, you can have a doctrine, but I want to tell you the enemy goes around seeking whom he may devour. Here's these people, they're rejoicing. You've got to, in, the, in these times, whatever you're going through, you've got to keep your eye on Jesus. Don't listen to the soothsayers. Don't listen to everybody that, that wants to pull you down. A beautiful Christian lady had a, had a bit of a problem with one of her children. Autistic or something like that. And this other very spiritual woman walked up to this lovely Christian girl and said, the reason that your child is like it is is because there's sin in your life. That would be a nice dose. Because unfortunately, sometimes we allow spiritual people to speak into our lives. And I know many years ago when we had a lot of people coming across the ditch, that they were used to, how you need somebody to speak into your life. Friend, I want to tell you, I need the Holy Ghost to speak into my life. 
I need the Holy Ghost to speak into my life. Yes, I'll, I'll draw from people, but friend, you've got to be careful what you say, amen? You've got to be careful about we don't allow our religious hang-ups to, to get on everybody else, amen? I believe in tithing. I am not ashamed of it, amen? I believe. If you don't believe, that is fine. That is, that's, that, I'm not, I'm not going to come down and condemn you, amen? But I want to just tell you where I stand, amen? Amen. Is that done and dusted? Is that settled? You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. You've got to know what the Word of God says. Acts 4. It's, uh, let's read from verse 7. And they, sorry, and when they had sat in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for the good deed done to, to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man's here, this man stands here before you. Listen to this. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which became the chief cornerstone. I, I, I think it's time that the church started to hear what God says. Amen. And let's not try to be politic politically correct with everything we say. Let's call a stone a stone and a shovel a shovel. You crucified this one. That's how this man got healed. You crucified him. How stupid can you be? And then he said, this one who God raised up, who you builders rejected, has now become the chief cornerstone. Here's Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you guys and girls, but while I was just sitting there, I was, I was starting to, as, as I was reading this story through, and, I, and as I just saw Peter, Peter there, and it says, and Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. What Peter had to say was, was amazingly powerful. But what I want you to focus on that day, and, and, and I, I just started to allow it to wash all over me. That day, as Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, friend, if you've ever been under the unction of the Holy Ghost, if ever, you, if ever you've stood up and started to speak under the mantle, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and as Peter, as he stood up there, it was as he spoke, the anointing, the, the, the presence of God that, that, that Peter, that just stepped into. He stepped into that, 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 that great outpouring of the Spirit that God was talking about. I want to tell you, friends, God will do it again and again and again and again and again if you are prepared to stand up, if you are prepared to get out of your whatever comfort zone or whatever it might be and stand up there as Peter, as, as the whole scenario is going on there. But Peter was watching this and he's watching that. He was watching Peter. People getting cranky, he was watching people there who were perplexed, who were amazed. Others were mocking, others were saying this. And he stood up there and he said, Hey, these men are not drunk as you suppose. And now he stands up there and they say, By what power, by what authority have you done this? And he stood up there full of the Holy Ghost. Oh, I don't know about you, church, but I want to see the church full of the Holy Ghost again. Amen. Come on, it deserves a better clap than that. Amen. I want to see the church full of the Holy Ghost. 
that when we stand up, when we sing, when we worship, when we praise, whatever it might be, that we just walk into, we step out of something and we step into something, the Shekinah glory, the presence of God, whatever it might be, that glory can, that heaven might come down and glory will fill us place. Amen. Oh, we had a touch from God last Sunday that was amazing. You can't make that happen. You can't. I was trying to work out how can I make that happen. <laughs> and that's when I started to read this and when I started to think. And, I, and the other message just went over there for a little while. It's coming, but don't worry. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. What he had to say was so powerful. But for any who have ministered in the power and the anointing, know the feeling of being overshadowed. Give me a wave if you know what I'm talking about. Give me a wave if you know what I'm talking about. And empowered by the Holy Spirit, and words just start flowing out of your mouth. The power of God just starts. God did it again and again and again. Find here that the disciples, after they've been beaten, go back and they start to pray and God does it again. I don't know too many places in the Bible where, where God just repeats himself. Usually he does once. So you can't make a rut of it. So you can't make it a doctrine or you can't make it a philosophy or, or whatever it might be. So he does it here like the burning bush and something else over here and something else over there. But, it's, but this here, this outpouring, it says that they, they, they lifted up their hearts again and, the, and, it, the, it, was, and it was like a, another outpouring of the Spirit. The place was shaken again. And that's why I, I, I want to say to you today, and I want you to get this in you, what God did back there on the day of Pentecost will never stop. It will never stop flowing, amen. It will never stop. It will never come down to a trickle. It's flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing, and it's waiting for you and me just to step into that place, to step into that place where God wants us to be, that as we lift up our hands, as we lift up our voices, as we just open up, that somehow or other the Shekinah glory will get on the inside of us and out of our innermost being will start flowing rivers of living water. This spake here of the Spirit, hallelujah. I want to tell you, friends, living water's got to flow again. Amen. Amen. We are not babbling brooks. We are a river. <laughs> We've got to get rid of stuff that, that clog us up, that get us on the wrong thinking, wrong thoughts, whatever it might be. Now there's here as it goes on in Acts, in Acts chapter 5. We find here that there's a, there's a group of people there's a, there's a power of God, and so the people start, start gathering together. The things of this world grew strangely dim. They start getting their things together. They start selling their stuff. They start distributing it to the poor. They start looking after one another. And they brought the, they, daily they brought uh, finances to the, and laid it at the apostles' feet that they might do something with it. I remember a story. This man told me this story, and I believe it was a very, very true story that this minister came to town and, and uh, he said, Brother, he said, uh, I've got this great ministry and I do this and I do that. And uh, he said, oh, yeah. He said, that's good. He said, uh, yeah, brother. He said, as a matter of fact, he said, uh, I really want to take up my own offerings. He said, oh, no, you won't do that here. We'll look after you. We'll, 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 we'll give you a good offering. We'll do this. You know, you, you'll be okay. You'll be right. Okay, so anyhow he goes down there and he starts to preach. And as he, as he starts to preach and as, as he feels the flow, and he says, oh, brother, brother, I'm very sorry. You see, that's where people get you when you're on the front row and they ask you to do something and you can't say no. That's why I say to people, don't ask me for another five minutes. <laughs> don't put me on the spot because I might have to say no. <laughs> and that both of us will be embarrassed then. And this man stood up and he said, Oh, brother, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. And oh, brother, I, I just feel that it's time to take up an offering for this ministry. Glory to God. Oh, come people, come and lay your offering at the apostles' feet. Come and lay your offering at the apostles' And people got up all over the place and they were throwing money at his feet. And he had this great stack of money and he was so happy with himself. And when he got over finishing preaching and the pastor got up, he said, Oh, praise the Lord this morning, brothers and sisters. Oh, 
what our brother's done this morning is so magnificent. He said, and they went and they opened up his Bible to the book of Acts chapter 4. And he said that they, that they laid the, the offering at the apostles' feet and it was uh, divided amongst the people for the needs of the church. And he said, thank you, sir. We gratefully appreciate this wonderful offering and I will make sure that it is distributed amongst those that are in need. <laughs> <laughs> and I went home very sad. No. <laughs> but you see, we, we, we treat the Bible sometimes as a bit of a joke. And here's Ananias and Sapphira. They, 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 they must have got in the spirit and said, we're going to do this. But then they didn't. They, they held back a portion, but they came there and they, they gave it, and, they, and Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, he said, fine, is that, you're doing okay? He said, yep. He said, that's what we got for the property. He said, why are you lying to the Holy Spirit? Friend, there is a Holy Spirit. <laughs> there is a God, amen? There really is a Jesus, <laughs> There's a, there, there is a Holy Spirit that knows everything that we think. He knows what's going on. He knows, you know, he knows you can walk in here. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but he knows. And this poor old fellow, he didn't know that he knew. <laughs> he said, why would you do that? And next minute he fell over dead. That had caused a bit of a stir in the church. <laughs> and and, the, and, they, and it, they don't even call the police or anybody, just bury him. <laughs> and then, then his poor wife walks in. She's privy to this thing. And, 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 and he, he said, well, he said, yep, that's what we got for the property. He said, well, why would you do that stupid thing too? The same people that they're seeing, they're coming back, they've just been burying your husband, they're going to bury you now, and boof, down she went. Well, we better not have any of that in the church. <laughs> but see, that's Bible, isn't it? Is that the Bible or isn't it the Bible? I, th I think that we should have a little bit more reverence. Amen? Uh, uh, the fear of Lord is what? The what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. My goodness, I believe that. But anyhow, poor, poor old Pete ends up in prison. He, he gets into prison. The next minute the angel gets him out and he's back out, <laughs> back in, back out, in and out of prison all the time. Paul casts out a demon and he ends up in prison. I, I just... Yeah, okay, I got the message. I'll finish. Mm. Hey, there is a God. There is a Holy Spirit. His word is true. Keep your eyes on Jesus, friend. We are living in perilous times. We are living in a time when we really, really have to be careful. We're living in a time when it's really, God, what do you want? What do you want? What can, what can I do for you? What, where, where do you, where do I fit? I, I just sense there's a few people that are asking that question, where do I fit? Where do I fit? I want to tell you, God knows exactly where you fit. Amen? We're just going to have the band back up. See, well, I guess what I'm trying to talk about a little bit today is our emotions. We hear of this and we hear of that. And we... I make a statement one week. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and for the last four weeks I've been... I'm still fearfully and wonderfully made. Just having a little bit of trouble. 
But actually, funny, right now, I don't have any trouble. That's why I'm preaching longer, because the longer I preach, the pain <laughs> is gone. <laughs> like when you get under the anointing. You've got to keep your eyes upon Jesus. You've got to know what God says about the circumstances that you're going through. People go through... So, friend, I would love to say that when you get saved, you're just going to... It's just going to be like bliss. But I found a lot of times it was exactly the opposite. I found out that it was a war. But it's, it's where, if I... If, if you don't know, you go down the gurgler. You, you can't cut a covenant with the world. We're in this world, but we're not part, we're not. The things of this world is, whatever God says for you to do, do it. And he'll look after you and he'll watch over you. And he'll be careful for you. I believe that for some of us, it's, it's sort of shutting one door and opening up another door. Walking through another door that says, okay, Lord, here I am. I want, I want to be part of this great end time church. See, the, the disciples, they weren't always perfect. Peter went fishing, did this and that and all that sort of stuff. Instead of serving God, what he's really saying, I've had enough of him, I'm going fishing. I've given up. He denied him three times. He said the last time really he, he blasphemed, he cursed. Things weren't always going right for them. But one thing I want to say this is that because we make mistakes like that, God doesn't abandon us. You know, He knew me before He saved me. And you know what, Smithy? He knew exactly what He was getting when you walked down that aisle and gave your life to Him. He knew exactly what He was getting. He knew exactly what I was getting when I walked down that aisle to give my life to Christ. But they still threw a party in heaven for us, amen? Let's stand to our feet. Friend, don't allow what you've done in the past stop you from doing what God wants you to do right now. Don't allow where you've been in the past to stop you from going to where God wants you to go. Allow the Spirit of God just to come and speak into your mind, into your thinking. I know that there's a lot of people from time to time and because of situations and Sharon said to me today and she said, oh, perhaps we need to slap some oil on you today. And I said, Sharon, I've had that many people lay hands on me. Do this and do that. I said, if I have too much more prayer, I'm likely to lose confidence in prayer. She knows what I'm talking about. I, I, I just believe by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Amen. I, I just believe that, that Lord, it's all okay. Amen. I'm not going to allow my emotions and why did, this, did God allow this to happen to me? It's got nothing to do with that. It's got nothing to do with this. It's got everything to do with all as well. It's okay. It's okay. There's a river that's flowing towards Neil. There's a mighty river that 
that we can dive into. We're not going to allow the, the circumstances or the, 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 our emotions. Don't allow your emotions to control you. Allow what you know God says to lead you and guide you. The disciples would have allowed their emotions. They would have said, how come I've done such much good? And now my back is laid bare and I've in prison. And these people are saying all horrible things about me. No, just there's a, something that's flowing from you to God today. And if you can allow God to touch you, I ought to tell you, it will break the stronghold. It will break down the walls. We're believing in this place that strongholds must be broken. They will be smashed. And my God, I pray today that you'll smash every stronghold where the enemies come to, to disrupt us in the areas of our emotions. And Lord, that we would not be just led by our emotions, but we'd be led by the Spirit of God. And that we would know, because we know, because we know that our God reigns. And Lord, I lay hold of that river. I drink from that river today. I drink from that mighty outpouring of your Spirit that you poured out. It will never be reversed. And God, will you do it again? Will you pour out your Spirit upon us now? We're not allowing the negative thinking of what's happening on the Sunshine Coast or around the world. We're not worrying about that. We're not concerned about that. What we're interested in is the outpouring of your Spirit that you're pouring out upon the Sunshine Coast right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Oh, hallelujah. Can you hear it? Can you sense it? Oh, when I was thinking of Peter, as he stood up there every time the anointing came on him. Oh, God, I remember, I remember it well. Oh, that mighty Holy Ghost fire that falls on you. That anointing. Oh, anoint us again, Lord. Fill us again, my God. Fill us again and again and again. Lord, that you might get all the glory in Jesus' name. If you're in this house today and you need some prayer, you need a touch, God's speaking to you about something, whatever it might be, just quickly slip out of your seat. Let us pray with you today in Jesus' name. Let's just sing that song a couple more times. Let it go, let it go. Just let it go. There are crowds of adoration as men of every nation. But things happen. Don't allow that to sit in your emotions and blame God or I don't blame anybody. I just know that there's a river. And I just know that this man's in God's hands. And I just know that God loves him. So Father, we just come before you right now and Father, we just pray that you'll just help us to just understand the times that we're living in. Lord, we want to be able to serve our generation. We want to be able to carry that anointing in the presence of God. Help us not to get caught up in the tricks of the enemy. Be led by our emotions. Let us be led by the Spirit. Help us, Father, to, to just commit ourselves to you and, and, and Lord, just walk through the minefields, walk through the trials that we might see the victory. Let us come to that river and drink from that great river. And Father, let us touch us afresh. People go today, let them go in the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you.